In this video, we're going to be building this effect you can see on this link here. Uh, I found this on uh, Web Designer Depot, this, this sort of transformation. So we're going to be recreating what I saw on here. So this is what the effect looks like. We're going to be using some transitions. We're going to be talking about uh, 3D. We're going to be talking about transforming elements rotating things and we're also going to look at some cool tricks that actually let us get away with effects like this so this is very new this isn't going to work on internet explorer we're going to add in vendor prefixes for webkit only but then you might go ahead and consider doing it for mozilla and opera as well so we'll build this and uh, we'll head over to the code and start doing it Okay, so we're over to the text editor. The first thing that I want to just point out is that I'm using a font called Open Sans, as a popular font, um, in 400 and 600 weights from the Google uh, font library. So you can see that this, uh, I've opened this here just to show you. Uh, you can use any font you want. This isn't doesn't necessarily work with Open Sans, but it does look very nice with a nice font. It's nice to you know create these fonts, uh, these effects with nice fonts. So go ahead and grab that if you want to. But for now, we'll go ahead and start building this. So I've also linked in a global.css style sheet, which is in the CSS directory. There's absolutely nothing in here at the moment. Uh, I'm just working with index.html, which has our basic document layout. Let's get started. So what I want to do first is obviously create this anchor, which is going to allow me to style um, everything up properly. So I'm going to create a paragraph element here. And inside of here, I'm going to say, you can find some cool stuff around here or whatever you want to write. So I'm going to choose some cool stuff to link up and I'll set the href to hash for now it doesn't you know we don't need this to link anywhere so this is what it's going to look like uh, first of all plain pretty plain pretty normal now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create a span within this anchor and the reason we want to do this is because we're going to be creating a pseudo element for the span and it's the span that we're going to be changing when we hover over this anchor. So we need to be able to target this anchor. So I'm going to give this a class of roll link. Now with the span, we'll look at uh, why we do this later and actually why this is necessary. But we need to create a data attribute so we can read this in with CSS. And we'll, like I said, look at how, sort of how we do this later. So we're going to call this title. Now this needs to match exactly, or it doesn't have to match exactly, but it's ideally it would match exactly what's within your actual span element. So this is some cool stuff. So briefly, this is because we need to take this content and add it to the pseudo element. And really the only way we're going to be able to do that, unless we're hard coding the value into our CSS file, which I'm assuming you don't want to do, um, you're going to need the data attribute here. So now that we've got our markup, let's head over to global.css and start to actually style this out. So the body, we're obviously going to incorporate the open sans font that we included from the Google font library or web font, whatever you want to call it. So we'll say open sans. So that's going to change the font of what we have. Perfect. So now I want to style all anchors. So the color I want for all anchors is uh, basically going to be E93A30. This is just taken directly from Web Designer Depot. It's just this nice red color. The next thing I want to do is set the font weight to 600. Remember we included that from the font from Google. And I want the text decoration to be none. I don't want any underlining here. So that's how our fonts, uh, our anchors are currently looking at the moment. So for the role link itself, we need to apply a few properties here. 
the f- well, mainly we're not going to see the benefit of why we're doing these yet until later on. But let's do them now anyway, just because we want to get these out, these sort of boring uh, properties out of the way and done with. We want this to display as an inline block because we want to uh, be able to apply uh, certain attributes to this that won't allow us to do it if it's an inline element. And we want to set the overflow to hidden. This is just going to ensure that any of the transformations that don't that take place aren't shown underneath the link. So we get that nice box flipping effect. Try at the end of the tutorial playing around with some of these and removing them and you'll see why we actually add them. And we want a vertical align to top. That should be pretty self-explanatory. So now let's check this out. Cool. So if we remove any of these at the moment, you can see that we have sort of a few problems here. So that's why we do it. So now let's focus on applying stars to the span within the roll link. We want to display this as a block because currently it's displayed as an inline element. And we want to give this a little bit of padding on the, oops, not 20, a little bit of padding on the left and the right hand side. This is just shorthand for top and bottom or north and uh, south and east and west or left and right. Um, what we also want to do here, in fact, we'll leave that for now. So what we now want to do is we want to say roll link and we want to apply a hover effect now or a hover action. On that, we want to set the span properties. So we're going to say we want the background color to be the same as the link color that we had before. So remember, this is hash E93A30. Let's check out what this does first of all. OK, so that's pretty straightforward. It just turns the background color red. Not very useful and not really getting the effect that we uh, want, to be honest. Now, what I'm going to do in, uh, now is I'm going to uh, style the pseudo element for this. And what this is going to do is it's going to add this, but because we've got overflow set to hidden, this isn't going to work. So let's, um, well, it's going to work, but it's not going to show us. So let's comment that out for now. And now let's go ahead and say roll link span and we style the after pseudo element. So what this is going to do is if we just pull up our element inspector, which is going to be handy later on, um, uh, once we start styling this or adding content, you'll see the pseudo element uh, appear under here. So for the content, we, oops, the content we supply a string value. Now, in this case, I could just write Alex, for example. I could really write anything. Um, you can see now that we've got this uh, pseudo element here. And in fact, the text has appeared there. We obviously don't want that. Now, what we want is we want the content to be what's within this data title because we want to mimic this. So when the box effect rolls up, it contains the same text. So we use the attribute function and we supply which attribute, oops, title, which attribute we want to pull out from. And in this case, it's data title. So here, that clever trick will basically just give us the same text uh, that we set in that data title. So now we want to also display this as a block because a, a pseudo element won't be by default. And we want to set the position of this to absolute so we can give it a left and a top value. Both of these are going to be zero. So we'll do the same as we did for the normal span, not the pseudo element. And we'll give this a padding of zero and two pixel. Again, 20 pixels, two pixels on the left and right hand side. And what we'll also do is we'll set the color to white and the background to red. So the background color, we'll just copy and paste this down for uh, just the sake of being quick. And we'll set the color here to white. So that's it for the sort of stylistic uh, properties here. Um, you can see that we're not quite getting the effect that we want. Um, if we just set the span to position relative, uh, what that will do is that will contain that within there. So you can see that that's sort of containing that within there. It's not floating off the 
the off to the page this doesn't really matter because when it comes to overflow hidden this will hide anyway but we'll keep this here for now so let's just set overflow hidden back let's get rid of this uh, position relative so you can see that this has floated up here we've given it the absolute position so the reason for this is we need to um, do some or, or basically add some more properties to this span and that is stuff like uh, the transform origin the transform style and then we'll go ahead and add a transition on this as well so we can actually see a transition at a particular speed so let's start with the transform origin and transform style and we'll briefly talk about what these mean so the property for this is, oops, not text transform, transform origin. And this basically transforms um, the origin of our transformations on an X and Y value. In this case, we'll do 50% and zero, that's X and Y. And we also want to change the transform style. And this is preserve 3D. And this basically uh, means that uh, we indicate that the children of the element should be positioned in the 3D space. And this is really important for the uh, translations and the rotations we'll be doing. So we're also going to add WebKit vendor prefixes, as I mentioned earlier. So let's add them now. Some of these won't actually work at the time of recording without the WebKit uh, prefix. So now you can see that's been positioned more or less correctly. So now what we want to do is we want to add the transition here because we have the hover effect. This transition will take place when we actually um, hover over. So we're going to say WebKit transition. Now we want this to be on all properties. We want this to be 400 milliseconds and we want this to ease in. We'll do exactly the same thing here for the uh, non-prefixed. So basically now that will transition. So now that we've got the transition in, let's just change some of the uh, properties on this span here. So I'm going to use the transform property and this is going to rotate on the X axis at an angle of 90 degrees. So we'll also add the WebKit transform in here and we'll see what this does. So when we refresh, cool. So now you can see that this is sort of flipping up like this. So now what we want to do is we want to add um, some properties to the actual uh, pseudo element that we've created here and this is going to do exactly the same thing as you can see at the moment we've got the red um, the red block by default and this is flipping up it doesn't really make much sense so if we apply this here we're going to change the transform origin so exactly the same thing on the x and y axis and we do exactly the same for the web kit prefix with the vendor prefix on And now what we want to do is we want to change um, the actual transform of this. So we want to use the translate 3D function, which is going to the, move the position uh, of an element. In this case, it's the pseudo element. Um, we're going to move it 100% on the Y axis. So let's just take a look at this. We'll use the transform property. What we're also going to do is rotate it on the x-axis uh, minus 90 degrees. So we use the translate 3D function. So this is the x, y, and z-axis. And we can chain on, rotate x. We already saw rotate x up here of a 90 degree angle. This time we're choosing a minus 90 degree angle. And we want to do the same thing with the WebKit vendor prefix. So now that goes because we've transformed it. We've used the translate 3D and the rotate X function. And now when we hover, you can see that that takes place. 
So with a few simple transformations, we've achieved this effect with fairly little CSS. Depending on the time of recording, you're obviously going to want to go ahead and add the other vendor prefixes for these if it's not supported. Remember, this isn't supported in IE at all yet. But what I would suggest you do is just play around with this if you do want to change any uh, sort of the way this works. Remember, you've got the element inspector. If you don't quite understand what any of these uh, different properties mean, you can uh, use this to just change things around. So, for example, if you wanted to change this and see what happened, you could. Um, but you can have a fiddle around here and see what else you can achieve from this. You can obviously increase the speed of the transition as well. Uh, with uh, this, you can use second values if you wanted this to be slower. You could say 0.5 seconds if you wanted, or the equivalent 500 milliseconds. You can do whatever really here, but uh, generally have a play around with these different uh, CSS properties and see what you can do with them.